Hello everyone and welcome to Tech with NK. In this video, I'm going to propose a solution to the exercise Little Professor from CS50's Introduction to Programming with Python. I'm going to go ahead and show you how I solve this exercise. However, my aim is just to provide you with a few tips or ideas that you could use while solving this exercise later on on your own. That said, let's look at the exercise and see what's expected from us. So we've been given this video, we could actually watch it and see what's there. If you've not looked at the video yet, I advise you to do so, so you can understand a little bit how the game works. But I'll just skip through this and go to the instructions that have been given to us. We've been told to create a Python file, we call it professor.py. And in this file, we're supposed to prompt the user for a level. And if the user does not input 1, 2 or 3, the program should prompt the user again. This means the only acceptable levels are 1, 2, or 3. The next thing that our code is supposed to do is to randomly generate 10 math problems formatted as x plus y equal to and wait for the user to enter something wherein each of x or y is a non-negative integer with n digits. What does this mean with n digits? Let's say the user entered level 1. This means that x or y could be values between 1 and Oh, sorry, could be values between 0 and 9. If the user entered level 2, then x and y could be values between 10 and 99. So you get the point. And our program should support only addition. No need to check the rest. The third thing that we're expected to do is to prompt the user to solve each of these problems. And if an answer is not correct or not even a number, the program should output EEE. -E -E. I'm guessing that's like error and prompt the user again, allowing the user up to three trials in total for that problem. And if the user has still not answered correctly after three trials, the program should output the correct answer for the user and skip to the next question. And the fourth thing that we're supposed to check is our program should ultimately output the user's score, the number of correct answers out of 10. We've been told to structure our program as follows, using the method random, and creating the following functions main, get level, and generate integer, and then call the main function at the end of the program. The function get level should prompt the user for a level and return 1, 2, or 3, and if need be, reprompt the user. And the function generate integer should return a randomly generated non negative integer with level digits, which I explained earlier or raise a value error if level is not 1, 2, or 3. We've been given a few hints in this exercise. If I look at the hints, it says, if we want to raise a value error, we could do so with code like this, raise value error. And we've been told to look at the Python documentation for the random module to see if there are any functions that we could use to solve this exercise. We've been given a demo here, and I'll advise you to play this demo to the end. But if we just look at this part of it, we see that when we run our program, professor.py, we prompt the user for a level. If the user enters, say, 1, then we know the values that we are supposed to generate are values between 0 and 9. The first exercise is 2 plus 8. The answer was 10, correct. 3 plus 7, 10, correct. 9 plus 4, 10, that's wrong. So the program outputted E, E, E. And then 9 plus 4, 11, still wrong. E, E, E. 9 plus 4, 12, that's still wrong. And after three trials, the program outputted 9 plus 4 equals to 13 and prompted the user again with a different question until 10 trials ultimately and then returned the score. So I think with this, the exercise is clear. I'll just go ahead and copy this, paste it in VS Code, and we're going to solve the exercise together. I'll start by pasting the lines of code I copied online, and then we're going to try to implement each of these functions one at a time. Starting with get level, then generate integer, and then the main function, which will actually be the longest. So starting with get level, before I go ahead to write this function or to implement this function, I'm going to create a variable above here. I'm just going to call my variable levels. This variable is going to contain a list with the values 1, 2, and 3 for the only acceptable levels of this game. Then in the function get level, I'm going to start by initializing a while loop or say while true. This is because I want the code to keep running till the user enters a level that is actually correct. 
I'm going to try to do this in the try except block because the user could actually enter something invalid here and we are supposed to catch those errors and reprompt the user till they input something that's right. I'll create a variable at this point or call it level and I'm going to set it to the input of the user. I'm going to use the int function to convert the user's input into an integer and use the input function to get input from the user or pass a string to it or say level and give space for the user to enter their input. And if the user enters something that's not an integer, say the user enters a cat or a dog, I'm going to catch that with an accept block using the value error. So accept value error, continue. And with this line of code, we're going to keep prompting the user to enter a level till they enter an integer. And if the user enters something that's actually an integer, I'm just going to check if the level the user enters is actually in our variable or in our list levels to make sure that the input is correct and if that's the case i'm going to return level if not i'm just going to continue the program keep prompting the user again and again till they enter a level that's correct and that will be it for our function get level the next function we're going to implement is generate integer with this function we're supposed to check the level the user entered, be it 1, 2, or 3, and generate random integers with n digits corresponding to the user's input. That is, if the user entered 1, we should generate a random integer between 0 and 9, 2, between 10 and 99, and so on. To do this, I'm going to use a bunch of if-else statements. I'll start by saying if level is equal to 1, what do I want to do? I'll create a variable or call it number and I'm going to set it to random.runInt and I'm going to give it some parameters from 0 to 9. So this is going to return random integers between 0 and 9 with 0 and 9 inclusive. I'll have to do this a number of times so I'll just copy this line of code, control C, then I'm going to keep pasting it, I'll paste it once more. I'm just going to modify this a little bit. Instead of an if statement here, I'm going to put an elif. An elif level equals to 2. I want to generate a random integer between 10 and 99. Next, elif level is equal to 3, not 1. I want to generate a random integer between 100 and 999. That's 999. I'm going to go ahead and remove this space here because that's not necessary. I'll paste this line of code one more time. And at this point, I'm going to say elif level not in levels, not in levels. We're going to raise a value error like we were told in the exercise. So I'll remove this and I'm going to say raise value error. And I'll end this function with a return statement for return number. So that's it for our function generate integer. This function should work just fine, getting a level as parameter and generating a random integer depending on the level, be it 1, 2 or 3, if not raise a value error. But if we look keenly at the functions we've created, we realize that this line of code, the raise value error, will probably never run because in this first function, get level. We are already checking that the value the user enters or the level the user chooses is between 1, 2, and 3. So we'll probably never have to do this. I just decided to write it because it was expected from us in the exercise. However, I think you can remove this and this code will still work just well. And now we're going to move to the main function. This function is actually going to be a little bit long, but don't bother. Just bear with me and we're going to do this step by step. To implement the function main, I'll start by creating a number of variables, initializing them to zero. The first variable I'll call trial equal to zero, and the second variable I'll call score, and I'll set this to zero as well. So trial is going to record the number of trials or the number of attempts the user has had at a specific question, and score is going to record the user's score so far. Next, I'm going to call the getLevel function to get the level from the user, and I'll set this to a variable I'll call it level, I'll just call the function get level with no parameters. So this line of code is going to get the level from the user. We don't need to do this repeatedly, so I'm not going to put this in any loop. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start my loop. Because remember, I was supposed to prompt the user 10 times or ask the user 10 questions. To do this, I'm going to use a for loop 
because at this point we have a specific number of times we want to run this code that's 10 times and that will be a lot easier with a for loop compared to a while loop so i'm going to go ahead i'll say for underscore in range 10 i'm using an underscore here because i'm not going to make use of it at any point in this loop and in this loop what am i going to do i'll start by generating the random integers i'm going to create two variables or call them value one and value two and i'll set these variables to my random integers or call the function generate integer and i'll pass the level to it level from the user's input and i'll call this function a second time generate integer passing level to it level equals level level okay and with this we've generated our two random integers we're going to continue the next part of our code in a while loop checking that the user attempts each question a maximum of three times so i'm going to say while trial trial is less than three then we're going to prompt the user to attempt each of the questions i'm going to put this in the try block to catch any errors from the user's input or create a variable or call it answer and in this variable i'm going to save the user's input or convert this input into an integer or use the input function to get the input from the user i'm going to pass a string to it using f strings then i'm going to say or put this in curly braces value one plus value two still in curly braces equal to and give a space for the user to enter his input this will look exactly like x plus y equal to and wait for the user to enter something and if the user's input is not a number say the user entered something like cat or dog we're going to use an except block using the value error to catch any of such errors and if that's the case we'll start by printing e e e to say that the user has entered something that's wrong e e e then I'm going to increment the value of trial by one to keep track of the number of trials the user has made thus far. And I'm going to use a keyword continue to prompt the user to try one more time. And if the user actually entered an integer and not something incorrect or invalid, we're going to carry out a number of checks to make sure that the value the user entered is the correct input. I'm going to put these checks in an else block. So I'll start by saying else. I'll use an if statement to check the input of the user. If answer, that's the user's answer, is equal to the actual mathematical operation, that's value one plus value two, then that will mean the user entered something correct. We'll increment the value of score, so score plus equal to one. Then we're going to reset the value of trial to zero, that's in case the user started by entering something wrong, or in case the user entered something wrong once. We're going to reset the value of trial to zero then we're going to break out of this loop because we want to go back to the top and prompt the user with a different set of questions but if the user's input is incorrect that if the user actually entered an integer but the integer is not the right value we expected we're going to print e e e or oh, uppercase e e e to show that the input is not right then we're going to increment the value of trial trial plus equal to one to keep track of the number of times the user has attempted the question and we're going to continue to go back to the top of the loop and prompt the user once more to keep trying and so in this y block we'll be able to get the input from the user check if that input is correct if that's the case we we'll increment the score set trial to zero and break out of the while loop but if the user keeps making a mistake or keeps entering something that's incorrect our value of trial is going to keep increasing till it's greater than three. And if the value of trial is greater than three, what we want to do is to give the right answer to the user and go back to the top to start a new set of questions. I'm going to use an if statement to do this and I'm going to move out of this Y block. Look at my indentation clearly. I'll say if trial is greater than or equal to three, I guess maybe just an equal to have work there, but I just feel like using greater than or equals to in this case. I'm going to print the correct output for the user and reset the value of trial to zero. So I'll go ahead and say print or use an F string to do this. I'm going to use curly braces here and I'll say value one plus another set of curly braces value two is actually equal to value one plus value two. 
So this is going to carry out the actual mathematical operation and return the value to the user. And when that's done, I want to reset the value of trial to zero. And at the end of this for loop, I'll go ahead and print the user score. So print f string score, then I'll pass the actual score of the user. Let me put a colon at this point, and I think this is good enough for this function main. So far, I think the code is okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and save this. I'll open up my terminal and we're going to test this exercise together. I'll go ahead and type in Python of professor.py and I'm going to run this. And as we expected, we've been asked to enter a level. Let's say we enter one. I don't want to do a lot of complicated maths here. And our code has given us our first exercise, one plus four. This is obviously five. So two plus three, five again. 8 plus 1, 9. 6 plus 8, what's that? 14. Yep. 7 plus 2, that will be 9. 6 plus 8, once more, that's 14. 6 plus 5. This time around, let's enter something wrong and see the behavior of our code. So I'm going to go ahead and say cut E E E, which is what we expected. 6 plus 5 again. I'm going to go ahead and say dog E E E. And just for the sake of it, I'm going to try and enter something wrong again. So 6 plus 5, I'm going to go and say 0. And our code has told us the right answer. 6 plus 5 is actually equals to 11. And then it still prompted us for 6 plus 5. I don't know if this is a mistake or if it's just a coincidence. I'm going to try this again with wrong answers and see what happens. So I'm going to say 3, 3, 3. And okay, it was not a mistake because this time around we'll see our code has given us a different set of questions. So that time was just a coincidence. That's reassuring. And once more, our code gave us the right answer. 6 plus 5 equals to 11. And so what's 5 plus 2? I'm going to give you the right answer and I'm going to say 7. And then what's 4 plus 5? 9. And we'll have our score 8. Which is actually right because we failed just two questions. Intentionally, but then we failed two questions. I want to believe this code is clear enough, easy and understandable for everyone. Feel free to modify it, tweak it and improve on the program because I believe it can be improved in one way or the other. And why not leave your comments below of the improvements you made to the program. However, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll be pleased to answer you. If you loved the video, do well to support the channel by hitting the like and subscribe buttons and I look forward to seeing you in my upcoming videos. That said, have a good day.